Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I am joined today by Luann Riley, who just preached a sermon called The Heart of Revival. Luann, thank you so much for being here with us today. So in your sermon, uh, we learned that the heart of revival is really repentance. Mm -hmm. Uh, Repentance, um, you talked about how it's repentance that leads to revival. It's Mm -hmm. repentance that leads to to freedom. Mm -hmm. Uh, But then a lot of times um, things like fear and like pride can stand in the way uh, of repentance, not to mention that repentance uh, can sometimes feel scary. Yeah. Um, and so uh, if you could, um, could you just walk us through practically what it looks like in your life uh, to repent? How does Luann Riley repent? Uh, yeah. So when we're talking about repentance, um, one of the parts that I didn't really focus on today that I talked more about at Ash Wednesday mm-hmm. uh, was repentance leads to freedom, but that doesn't mean that it, it's not painful sure. or there's not sorrow right. or there's not brokenness mm-hmm. um, involved. And so when I was talking about being honest about ourselves, um, you know, one of the things that I do each morning in my quiet time is I spend some time confessing. Yeah. Uh, I have this great sheet of questions that I kind of walk through about myself. It's like, what are you valuing these days? Mm-hmm. What what does your interactions and relationships look like yesterday? Uh, just, just constant like heart checks that I feel like I have to keep uh, with. And so I think through those questions and, you know, I ask the Lord in my quiet times to, to show me things that I might not be able to see. Um, and so I think one of the keys to repentance is uh, being willing to be open about who we are and who our sins are and to constantly be asking God to to show us those things and to confess those things. Um, and so, you know, I feel like I've had seasons where there was these huge moments of repentance, like we I talked about in my sermon today. And that was confessing and crying and mournful and saddened because I could see myself for who I really was. I could see the brokenness. I could see all the places that was wrong. Um, And so oftentimes repenting involves uh, telling other people too. Uh, Repenting might mean having to say, you're sorry to someone else. Not only is it making it okay with God and saying these things to God, but sometimes it could be other people. You know, for me, uh, recently I had another season where I had to repent of things that I had made uh, my life about again, like yeah. getting to this place where I feel uh, comfortable, like comfort is a huge thing for me. And I yeah. can begin to see it in my life when I start making decisions based on my comfort level in this situation. Yeah. Uh, am I going to put myself out there or not? And when I see those moments and I ask God to change that, one of the things that I do is I tell someone about it. Um, For this last recent time, it was my team and lead team and my husband and sometimes my small group. uh, But making these things known, you know how I talked about when we keep it in the dark, I think that the enemy uses shame and guilt and this idea of us having to keep it in the dark and look a certain way and be a certain way and not admit our brokenness. And that actually allows it to grow. It allows our sins to grow and it moves us farther from God. And I think one of the most freeing things that you can do is not only admit to yourself, but admit to other people where you're failing or where you're struggling. And Uh, I have a friend who I talk to on the phone every week and she'll check in with me about these things. How are you doing? She often calls me on things that when I'm telling her situation, she's like, yeah, I I don't know about that. Like, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? How did you really feel or how are you reacting to these things? So I think practically for me, uh, repentance looks like reflection being open and confessing, and then also uh, sharing that with other people in my life who can keep a check on that. Um, I think repentance can show in a different way though. I can think of these big moments Mm -hmm. like I described today, but I can also think of smaller times. And once I had that huge, big repentant moment that I talked about today, when I talked about how it changed my heart, I hadn't been open to repentance Mm -hmm. really before that. And once I saw how God can move, how much 
freedom I felt to wake up and make my decisions based on God, to ask Him what He wanted for my life, to be willing to sacrifice my image, my comfort, my safety, any of these things. Once I kind of stepped on in faith and like He showed up and things were happening, uh, it became easier to repent yeah. and to keep that repentant heart that says, oh, I'm sorry, you're right. I did hurt you in that situation. I want to repent from that. Like, I don't want to do that again. And so I'm going to ask a friend or someone in my small group right. to ask me about it and see how it's going. So I think practically confessing, sharing that with other people, and then constantly evaluating your life to see if it's coming, yeah. if you see signs of it again. That's good. Man, there's so much good stuff in what you just said of our need to uh, repent and confess, confess and repent daily, mm -hmm. right? It's not just a one-time thing. It should be happening constantly. You talk about how every morning you evaluate, okay, where do I need to confess? Where do I need to repent? And so it's, it's something that needs to be happening every single day. And you talked about the importance of community mm -hmm. in that of we were not <laughs> meant to repent alone, right? Our community is supposed to be a source of uh, accountability uh, and then of of encouragement to help us um, stay on track after we repent. That's that's huge. And then you also mentioned something. Uh, you said that once you had that one big moment of repentance, mm -hmm. uh, it became easier after that. And then in your sermon, you mentioned how repentance leads to freedom. Yeah. A lot of times we have this Old Testament view of like sackcloth and ash, and it seems like this really dark, you know, uh, kind of scary you know, thing. I, I think I thought about at one time repentance being kind of like how we live out punishment. Yeah. Like, um, Repentance is the punishment for our sin, which is where we put on sackcloth and ashes, or we wail, or we do these things, uh, I think, <laughs> rip your sleeves or tear your clothes or, or whatever it is. And that that's sort of the, the way that we pay for our sins or the way that we punish ourselves for our sins. And that kind of puts us back at like, like even, uh, which is not right. what repentance is at all. Yeah. I mean, repentance is acknowledging uh, where we get it wrong. It is being broken right. over our sin. There is sorrow and it's hard. Sure. Um, sometimes God asks us to do really hard yeah. things when we repent. Um, you know, I have a friend who uh, they had a situation in their marriage and it was his job. There was something at his job that was causing this. And so when they were working on it, they repented. The answer was leave your job. You need yeah. to have a new job. There are hard things that God might ask us to do sure. when we repent, which is one of the things I've talked about we were afraid of. Right. Uh, but when we do that and when we say, God, you are first, when we put the eternal things that matter as the focus of our life, there is freedom. Absolutely. There is this ability to pursue the things of God in a way that we weren't before because those things were keeping us from the fullness right. of what God has for us. Sin divides us. Sin keeps us from the fullness of our relationship with God. And thank goodness that Jesus died on the cross so we don't have to earn it back or do anything, but we do constantly have to go to that fountain of grace. That's right over and over again and say, God, I need you, I need you, and write that relationship so we can walk in the fullness of what he has for us. That's right, yeah, it's not him trying to balance the scales of justice, mm -hmm. it's him offering us freedom. You had a great analogy in your sermon where uh, you talked about when you're at the Bahamas and you wanted to stay in bed yes. all in day, the dark. and then you know uh, the light's thrown on you and you're like, oh no, and it really is, uh, like a lot of times when we're stuck in our sin, it's easy and it's comfortable, mm -hmm. um, and it takes little effort to just be able to stay in our sin and to hide from the light. But then we miss out on, yep. you miss we out miss on a day out on in the what beach, God has for right? You miss mm -hmm. out on all of this wonderful things that happen when you actually embrace the light, you come out of that darkness. And that's what you're talking about when you talk about how freedom is waiting for us yeah. um, if we just repent. Uh, and so, man, that's, that was a great sermon. Really, thank really you. enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you all next time. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.